so you have the choice to play around and see what feels comfortable for you. Let me just set up my screen real quick. All right, there we go. So yeah, like I said, if being on your back feels comfortable, then that's where you can be this evening, afternoon. Feel free to start in other shapes and start to make your way into that shape now. And then once you get there, you're gonna close your eyes and you're going to just pause for a moment. So whatever it was you were doing today, for some of you, I hear it's shoveling. So you might be looking forward to a little break. <laughs> some of you are nursing some injuries. Some of you, who knows, maybe you're feeling great and you're ready to really work it extra hard today in yoga. So, so just start to notice where you are and wherever you are is okay. The important thing is that when you acknowledge where you are, or you notice where you are, you can kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of tailor your class towards that. So I'm gonna give you suggestions. I'm gonna lead you through a practice, but you know best what it is that you need. So if you have pain in your hip or your back, maybe you modify. If you have that extra energy, maybe you hold a pose a little bit longer. Maybe you come out a little earlier. So you have the choice. So, so that's my little, a little spiel for your practice, make this work for you. But before we get started, I invite you to set an intention for your practice. So what your intention is, it's something that you're thinking about throughout the class. It's a word, a phrase, a mantra, some people call it, but it helps you stay present. So our minds tend to wander a lot, so it's totally normal. But if you have that intention or that word or that phrase, a little, little something to keep you right here. So as you start to let your mind wander, you come back, you focus, you kind of stay right here. So something that you need more of, maybe it's relaxing today after a busy day, maybe it's peace, maybe it's love, healing, forgiveness, kindness, something that you want to create, or it could even be something that you want to send out to someone else. If you know someone could use a little positivity, maybe your intention is directed towards that person. Once you have that intention, let's all take a nice deep breath into the nose. Let the lungs, the chest, the stomach expand, and then a big slow exhale out the mouth. Maybe just one more like that if it felt really good. Big giant inhale into the nose. Let it out the mouth. And then we're all going to slowly start to make our way into a full body stretch. So your arms are going to come up over your head. Your legs are going to extend long. If you work on your back already, that's okay. But some of you are going onto your back. So just take a moment to move however it feels good. Side to side can sometimes feel good. Getting a little stretch from one side to the other. Maybe the fingers or the toes move or roll the ankles and the wrists. And then on the next inhale, the knees are going to start to draw in towards the body. So bring your knees towards you, wrap your arms around your shins as you give yourself a little hug. And then turn this into a little bit of a movement. So maybe circling the knees, if that feels comfortable. Maybe rocking side to side, even separating the knees and taking opposite circles. And then let's all place the feet on the mat, keeping your knees bent as we extend the right leg long. We're just going to start to raise and lower that right foot. Pointing the toe as you lift the leg, flexing the toe as you bring it back down. Couple rounds just like that. Starting to stretch out the back of the leg. The legs are a little tight. Working today, so start to Start to create some movement, some fluidity in the back of the leg. And then the next time you lift the leg, your hands are gonna come behind it and just start to draw that leg towards you. Massaging the back of the calf, the back of the thigh, maybe bending and straightening the knee, rolling out the ankle. And this warm up is always a great time to do that little check in with yourself. So maybe you start to say, ooh, my calf is sore. Like I need to give that a little extra love or ooh, maybe I'm gonna, be a little gentler on this side. So as you start to warm up, as you start to move all your different muscles and body parts, so start to start to stir your ass today. And then we're gonna take that right foot, place it on the left knee, kind of doing a little figure four shape. Extend your arms out to either side of you, and then just rock your hips from side to side. Maybe it's more of a triangle shape than a figure four. So you're bringing the right knee towards the mat and then the right foot towards the mat. Just a gentle rock, moving the spine, twisting, 
rocking the hips. And then as you come back through center, pause here, place that right foot back down on the mat, extend the left leg and start to do the same thing on the other side, lifting and lowering that left leg. You might notice that your range of mobility is very different on this side. Maybe you can lift the leg a lot higher, maybe not as high. That's pretty normal. Depending on injuries, depending on what side of the body we favor, common to have one side feel a little different than the other. The next time the leg lifts up, go ahead and bring the hands behind the leg again, massaging the calves, the hamstring, bending and straightening the leg or rolling out the ankle. Maybe even walking your hands up the leg a little higher, lifting your head up off the mat as you draw towards your nose, your knee, your nose. And then slowly lowering yourself back down, place that left foot on the right knee this time. Arms come back to that T-shape, extending wide on either side of you. And then let the hips rock from side to side. This is a great chance for the spine to start to move and engage. We bend our spines forward often. If you were shoveling, you were probably bending forward a lot. But rarely do we move our spines in other directions. So side to side, backwards, circles, all that is so good for us. And then slowly as you come back through center, that left foot can come back down to the mat. We're gonna draw our knees in towards us, bring your hands behind your thighs, and then slowly start to rock yourself all the way up to a seated position. So maybe you take a couple rocks forwards and backwards along the spine. Maybe you just gently take your way up to a seated position if that feels more comfortable. Once you arrive in that seat, go ahead and slide a blanket or a pillow under your hips if that feels more comfortable. Otherwise, you can be right, right on the mat. Hands come to your knees. As you take a deep breath in, take a moment to really focus on sitting up nice and tall because I notice this when I'm in an in-person class and I'm sure it's the same here sometimes that we sit like this, but you're not really active. Maybe your spine is a little bent, your shoulders are a little bit forward, your head is forward. Even though you're in a yoga class, you would think you would be focusing on that, but, but it's easy to forget. So take a moment now and just really sit up nice and tall. Notice how much taller you sit up. Let the shoulders start to press down and back. Think about lifting the head, almost like a string is drawing your head up towards the sky, sitting up a little taller. Go ahead. Now that you're in this really nice posture, go ahead and take a deep breath into the nose, just like we did when we were lying down. Counting to four as you inhale. And then as you exhale, counting to four. Do that one more time, really slow, intentional breath in through the nose, filling up the chest, the stomach. And then again, exhale for four. Good. And then bring your hands to your knees if they're not there already. We're just going to start to bring the chest towards the ground as you circle the upper body. So again, focusing on that spinal movement in all directions. So taking a couple circles one way, you always have the chance to stop and pause. Sometimes you find a spot that feels really good and you just want to breathe into that for a few breaths. So go ahead and do that if, if that's where you're at. Maybe side to side feels a little better than the circles, that is fine. If you are doing circles, make sure you go back in the opposite direction so that you're even on both sides. And then when you're ready, You'll start to make your way back to your seated position, always coming back to that nice straight spine every time you come back here. And then taking a breath in, start to draw the shoulders forwards and up. And then as you exhale, roll the shoulders down the back. Two more times, inhale, draw those shoulders up. Exhale, release back. One last time, shoulders towards your ears, pause here, hold it, create a little tension. And then on a big exhale, side out, let it go. Good. We're gonna take our left hand to the top of your head and just gently start to press that left ear towards the left shoulder. You can take your right hand and walk it away from you a little bit, kind of like tenting the fingertips out to the right side. And so in doing this, you should be creating a little stretch on the right side of the neck. You're not really pulling the head down so much as just using the weight of your hand to just create a little bit of extra weight as that ear releases down. Think about relaxing both shoulders, especially that left shoulder. We don't wanna just try to get the ear to the shoulder and in doing so you end up lifting your shoulder up a lot. You wanna keep relaxing the shoulder and just focus on bringing the ear to the shoulder. 
and then slowly releasing the head all the way over to the right side. The right fingertips can start to gently rest on top of the head, both shoulders relaxed. And then if that felt good, you can start to walk the left hand away from you. The further away you reach it, you'll notice you feel it more and more in the neck. So if it's feeling a little too intense, dial the hand back a little bit. You want it to feel like a stretch, but you never want pain or discomfort or any sharp pain, especially. And then gently coming back through center again. So let's take a deep breath in as you lift your arms up overhead. As you exhale, the left hand comes to the side of you as you take a little side stretch. So leaning to the left side, go ahead and take that right shoulder and sort of press it back so that you're looking up towards the ceiling instead of looking down towards your mat. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way up, the shoulders relax again, take it over to the right side. So the right hand comes to the mat, left fingertips start to reach long, left shoulder rolls back as you look up towards the ceiling. Remembering to breathe here, that breathe helps create, that breath helps create that length. And then on the next inhale, back to center. And you can go ahead and bring your hands to the lap one more time. And then start to bring the feet together, setting up for a butterfly or a cobbler's pose. So the soles of the feet are together, your hands are interlacing around the feet. Kind of play around with where your feet are in relation to your body. So if you have your feet really close, you'll notice you feel it in your inner thighs a lot more. Walk the feet away. It's going to be a little more in the outer thighs and the hips a little bit. So find your spot. Take a breath in as you lengthen the spine. And then as you exhale, start to fold forward. And I want you to continue thinking about keeping that spine nice and straight. It'll have a little bit of a bend in it just because that's how our bodies work. But for the most part, you want the spine pretty straight rather than rounding the back in an effort to bring your head to your face. Kind of press your elbows into your shins. Think about drawing the chest towards the toes. And then gently sitting all the way back up. We're going to extend the right leg long. The left foot is coming into the right thigh, flexing through the right toes. And then as you inhale, the arms lift up. As you exhale, start to fold over that right leg. Just like we did when that leg was in the air, start to massage out the leg a little bit or kind of work out any knots or tightness that might be there, maybe even bending the knee a little bit if that feels good for that leg right now. Whatever allows you to kind of fold a little bit deeper into it, that's what you want to do. So kind of focusing on loosening up whatever is creating some tightness or resistance in the leg. We're all going to take a breath in and lift up halfway. So as you inhale, think about creating that flat back. As you exhale, see if you can fold a little bit further. Your fingertips can be on your shins or the mat or around your foot. And then gently starting to come all the way back up. We're gonna take the left foot, place it on the outside of the right knee. You have two options here. You can keep that right leg long or you can bend the right knee so that the right foot is kind of next to the left hip. Either option is a little, a little deeper if you bend the knee. It feels better to keep the leg straight, then go ahead and keep it straight. The right hand is going to come to the side of your body. And as you inhale, the left arm lifts up. As you exhale, wait, reverse. I totally messed that up. I'm sorry. Left hand comes to the side of the body. Your right hand lifts up. We're twisting to the left. I'm sure everyone is mixed up now because there's a lot of lefts and rights in this pose. And it's confusing without me messing up. So your right elbow is on the outside of the left knee. You're looking towards that left shoulder. Think about lengthening through the spine here. Each time you inhale, sit up a little taller. Each time you exhale, see if you can twist a little further. A lot of twisting today. Twisting is really good for us. And then we're going to slowly unravel that twist. And just for a breath, go in the opposite direction, the direction I almost took us in before. Looking over that right shoulder. And then gently coming back through center, extend your left leg, just kind of tap the backs of the legs out on the mat a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So the right foot is coming into the left inner thigh, flex to those left toes. And on an inhale, the arms lift up. On an exhale, you'll fold it forward. Just like you did on the other side, give that leg a little love. Bend the knee, massage the calves, the hamstring. Move a little bit if that feels good. 
doesn't have to be a still pose unless that's what what is working for you, which sometimes it is. Sometimes it feels good to just find one spot and just breathe into it. Stay still. So I'll take that halfway lift. So on the next inhale, the spine is going to lift up and lengthen as you breathe in. As you exhale, see if you can pull just a little bit further than you were before. And slowly starting to lift up through the upper body. If I can do this without messing up, the right foot is coming to the outside of the left knee. So that right leg is crossing over the left. You have the same option to bend the left leg if you'd like, or keep the left leg straight. This time our right hand comes to the side of the body. And as you inhale, the left arm lifts up. As you exhale, twist to the right. The left elbow is hooking to the outside of the right knee. So think about bringing the elbow to the knee and then using that connection, kind of press into the knee to create that twist. Looking over the right shoulder this time. And see if you can relax any part of your body that you might be tensing that's not necessary in this pose. That happens a lot where, at least for me, you'll notice I'm squeezing my thigh or I'm squeezing my jaw or my shoulders and if they're not even engaged in this pose or any pose. So if you find yourself engaging a muscle that's not necessary, see if you can try to relax it. And then let's start to take it over to the left side for just that one breath, right elbow to the knee. And back through center, extend both legs long, tap them out one more time, and then we'll start to make our way into a tabletop position. So coming onto all fours, your hands and your knees, Think about creating that tabletop shape. So a nice flat back, strong legs of the table. Your shoulders are above your wrists. Your knees are below your hips. And then we're gonna start to move through a couple rounds with cat and cow. So on the inhale, the stomach releases down, your gaze goes up. As you exhale around the back, press the ground away from you. Take a couple more rounds just like this. Again, thinking about moving that spine. I'm gonna keep pointing it out because the more we focus on it, the more we can kind of visualize it. So almost like that spine is like, I don't know, a wave or a whip or whatever, whatever visualization feels good for you here. Think about that spine just kind of fluid and moving. And maybe that means you add on a little bit extra. You might rock the hips from side to side. Sometimes that can feel good if you have tight hips. Kind of letting the hips release to the left and then to the right. Shake your head yes or no. Even make little circles, whatever. And then as you start to make your way back through center, let's, let's lift up the right leg. So point the right foot behind you. That leg is kind of parallel to the ground. And then as you inhale, draw the right knee towards the nose, round the back, kind of like that cat back. Exhale, extend it long. Two more times. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale, extend it long. Last time, knee to nose, round that back. Exhale, extend it long. We're going to find a modified side plank. The left foot slides off your mat to create a little kickstand for yourself. And then the inner arch of the right foot comes down to the mat. The right arm starts to lift up towards the sky. So right fingertips are reaching up. Take your knees towards that right hand. And then we're going to adjust the hand slightly. So Take your hand and start to reach it over your head. So now you're kind of creating one really long line on the right side of the body, reaching the fingertips towards the top of your mat, continuing to look under that right arm, pressing the hips up. And then gently making your way back to your tabletop. Right hand comes down, right knee comes down. Hips can sort of rock from side to side, shake it out, or maybe a little cat and cow. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side by extending the left leg long behind you. Take a breath in as you draw the left knee to the nose. Exhale, extend it long. Two more times. Inhale, knee to nose, round your back. Give that knee a kiss. Exhale, extend it long. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale, extend it long. Modified side plank. Right foot slides off to make that kickstand. Inner arch of the left foot comes down. Left fingertips lift up towards the sky first. So here, you're creating one straight line from the left hand to the right hand. Think about one long line as you look up towards that left hand. And then we'll start to take the left hand overhead. So instead of reaching the left hand up towards the sky, start to reach it 
towards the top of your mat. Continue rolling that left shoulder open. You'll feel a little more of a stretch along the left side of the body as you start to reach the hand towards the top of your mat. Kind of like you're opening up through the rib cage. And then gently placing the left hand back down on the mat. The left knee comes down to meet the right. Shake it out again. And then start to make your way into your downward facing dog. So the toes will tuck under. The legs start to straighten. The hips go up and back. And just take a couple breaths here as you settle in. For those of you who do this often, you know every time you come to down dog, you feel a little different. And it's okay. It's kind of a good way to check in with yourself. Just like I talked about at the beginning of class, you might come into your down dog and you're like, wow, I'm really tight today. Or wow, I'm really sore. Or maybe you feel really open and really energized. So this is a great pose to kind of check in with on the next inhale, we're going to roll it out into a plank position. So drawing the shoulders over the wrists, tuck the tailbone under. Notice if you can do that without making any adjustments with your hands. If you didn't, that's okay. But this is a nice way to check in with your alignment. So now that you're here in your plank, see if you can press it back to your down dog as you exhale. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale like a wave, roll it out to your plank. Engage the core, belly button draws up and in, tailbone tucks under. Exhale, send it back to downward dog. One last time. Inhale, roll it out to that plank. Exhale, send it back. Good. Now take your gaze and start looking towards your hands at the top of the mat. And then you're just going to gently walk your feet forward, coming into a forward fold. Your feet can be about hip width distance apart. So your big toes aren't right together. This will make it a little more of a gentle fold. And then you're just going to take any variation of the forward fold that feels good, holding on to opposite elbows, always my favorite. But there's other things. There's hands behind your head, sort of drawing the head down. That can feel like a nice little stretch, almost like we did when we were stretching our necks earlier. You can use the weight of your hands to kind of draw the head. You can put a bend in the knee. I strongly encourage that. I usually always bend my knees because it'll help you get more of a stretch in your back. We make our knees really tight. Sometimes it inhibits us from going as far as the pose. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, we're going to start to peel all the way up to standing, reaching the arms overhead once you arrive, take your knees up towards the sky. And then we're going to interlace your hands, step your feet together. So now your big toes are together. Start to press the palms up towards the sky as you inhale, lift up. As you exhale, take it to the left side. So another side stretch, this time standing. Roll that right shoulder open as you look under the arm. Inhale as you lift it up. Exhale over to the right side. Roll that left shoulder open as you look under the left arm. And inhale, lift it up. As you exhale, big giant swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, bringing your hands to your shin. Flatten your back. So think about getting at that nice flat back again. As you exhale, fold. Inhale, lift it up again. Arms come overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Good. One more time, just like that. Inhale as you lift the arms up. Exhale as you dive it down, forward fold. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, flat back. Exhale as you fold. Inhale as you lift it all the way up, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Good. Let's take another breath, reaching those arms up overhead. This time, as you exhale, sit back into your chair pose, that imaginary chair that's not actually there behind you, but pretend it is. Your weight is in your heels, so you can even be wiggling your toes a little bit. Think about being really light on your toes. Relax the shoulders. The knees are over the ankles or slightly in front of them, but nowhere near the toes. And then we're going to bring our hands to heart center. You're going to twist to the right. As you look to the right, think about twisting the upper body, the hips and lower body staying where it is. Twisting the upper body. Think about bringing the left elbow towards the right knee. It doesn't have to touch the right knee. Maybe it does. 
So we're working it in that direction. Try to keep the knees squared so the left knee isn't going in front of the right. Now that we've been in our chair forever, let's start to slowly come out of it. So go ahead and straighten the legs, reach the arms up overhead, a little back bend that should feel good. And then as you exhale, we're going to sit right back into the other side. Relax the shoulders, start to settle into that chair again. And then the hands come to heart center. This time twisting to the left. Lower half of the body stays still, upper half twist to the left, and then start to draw the right elbow towards the left knee. You want to be looking up towards the sky or towards that left elbow or wherever you can look on the left. And then on the next inhale again, go ahead and unravel it, reach the arms overhead. Should feel good. Exhale forward. So this time we're going to bring our hands to the mat. You can kind of put a little bend in your knees if you need to get your fingertips to the mat. And then the left foot is going to step to the back of your mat. So maybe one giant step, maybe a couple small steps until you're in this low lunge or runner's lunge. Once you arrive here, left knee comes down, untuck those toes. On an exhale, press the hips back, straighten that right leg as you fold over that right leg. The half split. We're going to continue to move here. So the hips press forward, the knee re bends. As you inhale, the upper body starts to lift up. Think about opening up to the heart, the chest, looking up a little bit so you're stretching the throat. And then as you exhale, right back to that half split, hips press back, fold over the right leg. Do this a couple more times with your breath. So think about warming up the hips. When you're forward, think about pressing that left hip flexor, the front of the left leg, down towards the mat. As you exhale, press the hips back, straighten that right leg. Maybe pausing if it feels good to hold one of these poses. And then the next time you come forward, we we'll start to make our way into Anjana Asana or the crescent lunge. So your hips are pressing forward. Your hands can either stay on the mat if you like them there, or they're gonna come to your knee, or they're gonna reach all the way up towards the sky. There's lots of options, but I want you to focus on continuing to press those hips down. Sometimes we start to bring the hands up and then those hips dial back. You wanna keep pressing the hips forward. So that might mean having your hand on your knee or on the mat. Wherever your hands are, it's fine. Just give that hip some love. And then slowly bringing your hands back to frame out the right foot. We're going to tuck the left toes, straighten the back leg. The left knee is going to step up to the center of your mat. So kind of a tricky transition. Maybe you take a couple little steps or one giant step. This is called pyramid pose. You're kind of making a triangle or a pyramid with your legs. Take a breath in, kind of lift up halfway, flat back. And then as you exhale, fold over that right leg. You have blocks or something to bring your hands to. This is a great pose to use them. Also, even if you have a chair, you can just put your hands on the seat of the chair. That can kind of help you um, find some stability in this pose if the ground is feeling a little far away. You definitely can. I usually tend to just have the tips of my fingers on the ground here. So we're going to take two more breaths here. Try to dial the left hip forward, send the right hip back so that the hips are squared off. Always breathing. Good. So we're going to start to come into a little bit of a balance from here. So the weight is going to come into the right foot. You're going to slowly play around with lifting the left foot up off the mat. Maybe it's just gently lifting it a couple inches. Eventually, maybe that left, left leg or back leg is parallel to the ground. So see, see what feels comfortable, see what feels accessible. Flex the left foot. And I know I keep talking about how we feel different all the time. It's so true. I just came into this and I noticed feeling really tight and I'm really tired in this pose. Usually I'm not. So it depends on, on where we're at every day and that's okay. We're all going to come into a forward fold from here. The left foot is going to come down to meet the right and kind of just shake it out a little bit. Maybe Rock it out from side to side. Maybe bring your hands to the shins like you did earlier. Just keep that breath in. Let it go. And then on the next inhale, we're going to lift it all the way back up. Reach the arms overhead. And exhale, 
hands to heart center. Good. On the next inhale, the arms reach right back overhead. As you exhale, dive it down forward fold. And this time you know where we're going. That right foot is gonna step to the back. So one giant step or a couple small steps as you make your way into that low lunge or that runner's lunge with the left leg forward. And then the right knee comes down as you untuck those toes. Exhale, straighten the left leg, send the hips back. And continue to move here with your breath. As you inhale, that left knee bends, the upper body lifts. As you exhale, the leg straightens and you fold. So trying to keep this movement fluid, warming up through the hips. And moving with the breath. The next time you come forward, we'll start to come into the crescent lunge pose by pressing those hips down and then starting to lift up through the upper body. So hands can stay where they are. Focus on lifting up through the head or your hands will come to your knee or all the way up towards the sky. And then gently bringing those hands back to frame out the left foot. Right foot tucks as you straighten the back leg. And again, we're going to step that foot up about halfway. So maybe a couple small steps, one giant step until your feet are maybe three ish feet apart. Or so. A little bend in that left knee if that feels comfortable, or else bring your hands to whatever props you might be using. Take your breath in to straighten through the back of the body. And then as you exhale, fold, thinking no sticky here. As you press the left hip back, draw the right hip forward. And then let's again start to prepare for our balancing pose, our warrior three. So the weight starts to come into the left foot. You can even step the right foot right behind the left first if that helps you kind of come into it. And then when you're ready, that right foot begins to lift. The foot flexes. Think about trying to step on the wall behind you, kind of flexing that foot, engaging the foot. Take two or three more breaths here, strong through that standing leg. And then one more time, forward fold, right foot comes down to meet the left, shake it out, you can rock out the hips, bring the hands to the shin, whatever feels good as you kind of just shake it all out. And then on the next inhale, we'll lift it all the way back up, arms come overhead, exhale, hands to heart center. Good. We're going to step our feet a little wider, so maybe Maybe as wide as the short side of your mat, so a little wider than your hips. Take a breath in as you lift the arms up. As you exhale, dive it down, forward fold. You're gonna take your peace fingers, so your two fingers next to your thumb, and you're gonna start to wrap them around your big toes. You can bend your knees as much as you need to get this. The legs don't need to be straight. The idea is that you're getting that grip on your toes. And then you're gonna take a breath in, think about lengthening through the spine. And then as you exhale, start to draw the top of the head towards the mat. So you're using your fingers around your toes to kind of draw the head down a little bit more, getting a little bit of a, a deeper stretch than you would get without that connection. You can move a little bit if it feels good, rock the hips from side to side. Think about bending the elbows behind you rather than out to the side. So the, the arms are kind of tucked in close to the body. And then slowly releasing the fingertips from the toes, we're going to place the left hand down on the mat, put a little bend in the left knee. And then as you inhale, the right arm is going to start to lift up towards the sky, coming into a twist, looking up towards that right hand. And then gently the right hand comes down to the mat in front of you, a little bend in the right knee. And as you inhale, the left arm comes up, roll that left shoulder open, take your gaze towards that left hand. And slowly bringing the left hand back down to the mat. And we'll just gently start to roll our way all the way back up to standing. Take it nice and slow. We were leaning forward for a while, so we don't want to make ourselves dizzy. And then once you come to standing, let's do, let's do one more little balance. We did our warrior three, but 
why not do a second balance today? So we're going to come into our tooth pose to find a nice firm foundation with the right foot. Left foot is going to come into the inner ankle. So the left toes can even stay on the ground here or on your mat. Your hands come to heart center. If you want to take it further, that left foot can start to climb its way up the right leg, resting on either the shin or the inner thigh. And then you also have the option to play around with your hands. Maybe you take that prayer pose overhead, maybe you open it up. If this feels wobbly, options to help could be stepping off your mat, especially if you're on a hard floor, that'll help give you a little more stability than a carpet or a squishy yoga mat. Another option is to stand with a wall to your right side, either leaning on the wall, you can totally use the wall, or just having it there in case you need it. Sometimes that gives you the confidence to like take it a little further because you know if you need that wall, you can grab it. So those are all options. Take one more breath here. And then gently start to bring your hands back to heart center, slowly lowering the left foot back down to the mat. We're just going to shake it out a little bit, maybe a little forward fold. Sometimes that feels good for the hips and lower back. Kind of shake it out however you need to. And then we'll start to come over onto the other side. So finding that firm foundation with the left foot this time, the right foot starts to come into the inner ankle. And I always like to start here and then you can kind of check in and say, is this where I'm staying today? If so, great. Start to find your position with your hands. If you feel like, okay, I've got this, I can do a little more, then you start to walk the hand, the leg up. I, I don't know, something is off my balance today because I am wobbly, so I'm going to keep my foot a little lower. Some days I might have it higher. Go ahead and find whatever variation you like with your hands. If you want to reach them overhead, maybe they're kind of swaying in the breeze a little bit, that's okay. The important thing is that you're continuing to breathe here. It can be so tempting to hold your breath when it continue to breathe. It also helps to look at something that's not moving. So something small like a light switch or an outlet or something, something tiny that you can kind of keep your focus on, that can help a little bit sometimes. And then slowly start to bring your hands back to heart center. Right foot comes back down to the mat. Same thing as the other side, shake it out. Maybe that little forward fold if that felt good. And then just start to make your way back to the top of your mat if you're not there already. As you come back to the top of your mat, take a deep breath in, lift the arms up. As you exhale, dive it down, forward fold. And same things we did before, we're going to take that step back. So the left foot is going to step back one more time, coming into a low lunge. This time we're going to keep the left hand on the mat, so kind of ground down through that left hand. And as you exhale, the right arm lifts up towards the sky, taking your gaze towards that right hand. Imagine a string attached to the center of your chest, like kind of where your ribcage connects, and that string is drawing you up. And then gently placing that right hand back down on the mat. Just start to walk your hands over to the left side, coming into that wide-legged forward fold. So kind of pivoting your toes to face the left side of your mat, and then settling into that wide-legged forward fold. You always have the option here to move however you like. So it could be bending one knee at a time and sort of rocking from side to side. It could be walking your hands to one leg and then the other leg. Do what feels good. Play around. Two or three breaths here. And then we're going to slowly start to come back to that low lunge. So just like we got into it, the fingertips start to walk back to the top of the mat. The right toe turns forward, pivot to the ball of that left foot. And then we're going to step it back up to a forward fold. So that left foot back up to meet the right. Maybe one giant step, maybe a couple of steps. Hands come to shins for a little halfway lift if you inhale. And then as you exhale, fold forward. And then we're just going to Step that right foot back. Giant step or a couple steps, either way. However you need to get that foot to the back of the mat, that's how you do it. Right hand grounds down as you inhale. And then as you exhale, the left arm starts to lift up towards the sky. Roll the left shoulder open as you look up at the left fingertips. Think about keeping that left knee on top of the left um, 
ankle. Sometimes we start to like let that leg sort of get sloppy and lean out to the side. You want to keep that left leg strong. And then gently placing the left hand back down on the mat. And one more time, we'll find that wide legged forward fold. So this time the hands start to walk over to the right side as we settle into one more wide legged fold. Maybe doing something different on this side. Could be walking your hands way out in front of you or way behind you, sort of drawing the top of the head towards the earth. Or even holding on to opposite elbows or stillness. And then gently starting to walk the hands back to the left foot as you spin on the ball of the back foot, coming to that low lunge one last time tonight. And then again, forward fold. So one giant step or a couple small steps until that right foot comes up to meet the left. Hands come to your shins. You take a little halfway lift as you exhale, fold. And then on the next inhale, lift it all the way up. Overhead, little back bend, and hands come behind. Beautiful. On the next inhale, those arms lift right back up. As you exhale, guide it down, forward fold. This time, we're going to step it back to our downward facing dog. Start to walk the feet to the back of the mat. Couple steps until those feet are back in their down dog where we were a while ago. Your gaze is coming to your thighs or your shins. Your hips are the highest part of your body. Maybe you continue to move here a little bit if it still feels good. Lifting up your heels and then pressing them back down. Bending your knees and then straightening the hips to rock from side to side. Let's just take one little flow here, one little kind of yoga flow. So we're going to roll out into a plank position, just like we did at the beginning. This time you're going to bring your knees down to the mat and you're going to slowly lower yourself all the way onto the mat. So keeping the elbows hugged in towards the body, coming all the way onto your stomach. And then on the inhale, you're going to lift the upper body, either pressing the hands into the mat and kind of pushing yourself up. If this feels like a lot, then keep the hands off the mat and just lift the upper body with what you can do without pressing the hands. When we press our hands into the mat, sometimes we accidentally push a little too hard and take the spine a little further than it wants to go. Okay. And then gently bring your hands back to the mat and we're all gonna press back into a child's pose. So the toes are together, the knees are slightly apart. And just take a breath or two as you settle in here. Your fingertips can stay at the top of the mat. Stack your hands on top of each other and rest your forehead on your hands. You can also take this time to grab a sip of water or anything else you might need as you take a break. Take about three to five breaths. Reminding yourself of that intention that you set at the beginning of class. And then to come out of our child's pose, you're just going to sit up a little bit and we're going to come into a seated position. So you can kind of lower yourself down and start to extend your feet long in front of you so that your feet are at the top of your mat. If you want to grab any kind of sweaters or socks or anything before we start to lay down, go ahead and do those things now so that you can be cozy as we begin to end our practice. So sitting up nice and tall, extend your arms out in front of you, engage your core, and then one vertebrae at a time, you're gonna to start to lower yourself all the way down onto the mat, finding a full body stretch, just like you did in the beginning. The arms reach overhead as you take a big deep breath in. And then as you exhale, the hands can come to the sides of the body. We're gonna bend the knees, bringing the feet to the base of the spine setting up for our bridge pose. We're gonna do two bridge poses tonight. So when you're ready, you'll take a breath in and start to peel the hips up off the mat, peel the spine up off the mat. 
and then your hands can either continue to press into your mat or you can start to walk the shoulders under you and interlace the hands under the tailbone. So either option, whichever feels more comfortable. If you have the hands interlaced, think about coming the palms together. That'll make it a little deeper. Your chin is tucking into your chest as you press those hips up just a little higher. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, we're going to start to peel the spine back down onto the mat. Once your tailbone touches, your knees can rock from side to side. And we're going to do that a second time. So taking a moment to set yourself up. And then when you're ready, again, hips start to peel up off the mat, spine starts to peel up off the mat, and choosing the same variation with your hands, or maybe trying the opposite than you did the last time. Hands are interlaced or they're pressing into the mat. So your legs are relaxed, your core is kind of active here, but they're also not, um, they're still engaged. So you're not tensing your legs, but you're also not just kind of like letting them flop out to either side. They're, they're still strong and supporting you. Your chin is tucking into your chest and you're breathing here. It can feel a little weird to breathe like this, but it's important. And we're giving that back a nice little chance to bend in a way that it doesn't usually bend. One vertebrae at a time, slowly start to peel the spine back down onto the mat. Once the tailbone touches, the knees will again rock from side to side. And then as you come back through center, we're going to take the right foot place it on the left knee. Same shape we made at the beginning when we were rocking the hips from side to side, but this time we're going to lift the left leg up off the mat, interlacing your hands behind that left leg. So both feet are flexed. You're drawing the left thigh towards you, and as you do that, you're creating a nice little opening in the right hip. You can even take the right hand and just gently press it on the right knee if that feels good. We're going to take few breaths here, allowing that gentle opening in the hip. You can rock from side to side if that feels comfortable. You can bend and straighten the left leg. And then just gently placing that left foot back on the mat. Slowly bringing the right foot back down to meet it and then switching sides. The left foot will come to the right knee and gently lifting that right leg up off the mat as you interlace the hands behind the right thigh, flexing through both legs. Maybe gently pressing the left knee away from you. The idea is to feel that little opening in the left hip. You're going to draw the right leg towards you until you start to feel that, that gentle stretch in the hip. Same options if it feels good to rock side to side or a little movement in the right leg. And then gently placing the right foot back down on the mat and the left foot comes down to meet it. We're going to draw the knees in towards us, giving yourself one last little hug. Lifting your head up towards your knees, kind of curling up into a tiny little ball. You can place your head back down on the mat and then slowly start to extend your feet up towards the sky, coming into an inversion. So your hands can either be resting behind your legs or supporting behind your legs, I should say, or you can sit on your hands. I should have said this before, but you always have the chance, the option to do this against a wall as well. So if you like to do legs up the wall with the wall, Go ahead and reach yourself over to a wall and do the same thing with the wall. <laughs> a little more active without the wall, totally up to you, which feels best for you this evening. But wherever you are, we're going to hold this for about five or seven more breaths. So start to find the variation that feels comfortable for you, maybe even closing your eyes. And then just beginning to count those breaths, maybe slowing the breath down a little bit. See if you can count that four count breath, inhaling for four and exhaling for four. And 
if you're not using the wall, you can slowly start to draw your knees back towards you. If you are using the wall and you want to stay a little longer, that's fine. For those of you not on the wall, you can extend your legs long. And your hands are coming to the sides of your body. We're going to lift up through the upper body, pressing your forearms into the mat. So thinking about kind of puffing up your chest, puffing up your heart a little bit. Point your toes. Maybe look behind you if that feels comfortable on your throat. So you're really opening up the throat, the heart center. If it doesn't feel good on your neck, keep looking forward. Just focus on kind of puffing up that chest. And then slowly one vertebrae at a time. You'll lower yourself all the way back down onto the mat. The knees are going to draw back in towards the body. Your arms extend wide, and then the legs come over to the right. Starting to settle into a twist here. Let this twist feel comfortable for you. So if that means looking up towards the ceiling, do that. Maybe it means turning your head to the left in the opposite direction of your knees. Sometimes it can feel good to deepen the stretch a little bit by crossing one leg over another. If you have any kind of tightness in the hips, sometimes that can feel really good. And that doesn't feel good. <laughs> Play around with it and see. But let this just sort of be your opportunity to begin to slow down a little bit. The eyes can even begin to close here. The breath can start to slow down a little bit. And then just gently starting to bring the knees back through center and all the way over to the left side. Same options. You can play around with crossing your legs. You can play around with where your head is. Wherever you are, see if you can relax your shoulders down towards the earth. So that right shoulder is probably lifting up a little bit, but focus on drawing the right shoulder back down. And then just gently beginning to make your way back to center. The feet come to the mat, the knees are bent. We're going to start to let the knees release out to either side, bringing the soles of the feet together. So coming back into that butterfly shape with the legs, but this time on our back, the supine butterfly or reclined butterfly. Your hands can be resting on your inner thighs or on your stomach and your heart. Take a couple of moments here to let yourself start to. Yeah, become heavy or melting into your mat, almost like you're completely letting go, completely surrendering, just starting to sort of soften and melt, like all that snow melting away. <laughs> so take a moment now and check in with yourself. See if there's anything else that you still need out of your practice tonight. Maybe there's another pose that would feel really good for you. If there is, then go ahead and do that now. And then when you're ready, start to decide where you're ending your class. And it might be here. A lot of people like this pose for Shavasana. If you're not one of those people, then slowly start to make your way into a Shavasana that feels comfortable for you. So that could mean just extending your legs long, maybe reaching your arms out really wide, your legs really wide, taking up a lot of space. You can start to come onto your side. You can even sit up if that feels best. So go ahead and start to find that shape that you want to end your practice in. Begin to let your eyes close if they weren't closed already. And then just settling in, enjoying these final moments here on your practice.
slowly beginning to deepen your breath. Just gently starting to move your fingers and your toes, your wrists and your ankles. As you gently wake up the body, using any movement that feels good, bending or straightening the knees, reaching the arms overhead. And if it feels comfortable, turning over onto one side on your mat, the knees bent, resting your head on your arms, finding a fetal position. Taking these last few moments here on your mat to feel that feeling of calm and peace, you know, letting that settle right there in the center of your heart. So all that good energy and that positive vibes that you created here on your mat, imagine it kind of all floating around and now it's just sort of settling right there inside of you so that when you get up off your mat and go back out into the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and really the rest of this holiday season, you can keep that feeling right there inside of you. So if things start to get a little crazy or tense, you can go back inside and find that, that piece that you created and left right in there. Whenever you're ready, Slowly begin to make your way back up to the seated position, gently pressing yourself up, bringing the hands to heart center. I am so grateful for all of you for joining me. I hope you have the most beautiful night and most beautiful week until I see you all again. Namaste. Um,